All right, are you ready for a really fun partial fractions problem? This one's kind of crazy. You got so much going on here, it's gonna blow your mind. All right, uh, so, but this one to start with, uh, one thing that's helpful is that they've already factored it at least part way for us. Uh, you would wanna check the second factor and think about whether you can factor this more. Uh, but if you think about the possibilities of factors of 10, and things that add up to negative six, you're gonna figure out pretty quickly that you cannot factor this more, at least over the rational numbers. So we're gonna leave that one uh, unfactored. So we're gonna say that this one is irreducible over the rational numbers anyway. So I can't rewrite that as simpler linear factors here. Okay, so this is one where uh, we have a quadratic factor in the denominator here. So when I set up my partial fractions, I'm going to have one uh, of my fractions with a denominator of x minus 1, and that will have a numerator that's just a constant. And then the other one will have a denominator uh, that is this irreducible quadratic factor. And uh, the numerator, though, will be one degree less. So the numerator will be bx plus c where b and c are constants, but that's a degree one polynomial on the numerator. And then we're gonna set that equal to the original expression and then go through our usual partial fractions here. Okay, so when we do the partial fractions, uh, we'll go ahead and multiply through by that common denominator, uh, x minus one times x squared minus six x plus 10. And when I multiply that, we'll get uh, some simplifications here. Okay, so uh, when I multiply the a time, the a over x minus one times my common denominator, the x minus one factors are, will cancel and I'll be left with a times x squared minus six x plus 10. And then when I multiply the second fraction, the bx plus c over x squared minus six x plus 10 times the common denominator, uh, the x squared minus six x plus 10 will cancel, but I'll be left with the bx plus c times the quantity x minus one. And then on the right side of the equation, the entire common denominator will cancel with the denominator, and so we'll just be left with seven x minus 12. Okay, so uh, one of the things that we've been doing is plugging in convenient values of x to make some factors go away and solve the partial fractions problem that way. Uh, that's not quite as easy here because although I can make the x minus one factor go away pretty easily, getting the other factor to go away isn't quite as easy. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. Uh, and sometimes this is a more convenient way to do these problems. Uh, the better you get at these, the more you might be able to combine a few steps, but I'm gonna start by just distributing through so that I've got my entire polynomial on the left side expanded out. So I'll have ax squared minus six ax plus 10a. And then I've got uh, some foiling to do here. So let's see, I'll have plus bx squared minus bx plus cx minus c, and then all that will equal seven x minus 12. Okay, and then on the left side of the equation, I have a couple of x squared terms. Uh, I also have some x terms, and then I have a few constant terms, just two constant terms. Remember A, B, and C are constants. I have to figure out what they are, but they are constants. So uh, what we're gonna do next is on the left side, I'm gonna regroup those terms so that I've got the x squared term coefficients. If I knew what A and B were, I could add them together and I would get A plus B times x squared. And then the x term coefficients, so I'll have minus six A uh, and then a minus B and a plus C. So that's the coefficients of the X terms. And then the constant terms, 10 A minus C. Okay, and if this equation is true, it is true for all values of X. And the only way that's gonna be true is if my coefficients of my like terms on both sides of the equation uh, are the same. So for example, for the x term, 
I need that this minus 6a minus b plus c is equal to 7. And then for the constant terms, I need 10a minus c to be equal to negative 12. I don't have any x squared terms on the right side, but I do on the left. Uh, so that's going to mean that that x squared coefficient that I have over here on the left side should be equal to 0. So from there, uh, what I'm going to do is write a system of equations by equating coefficients from both sides of the equation. So uh, for my x squared terms, the coefficients on the left side, I have a plus b, and then on the right side of the equation, I don't have any x squared terms, so that coefficient is 0. And then for the x terms, on the left side, I'll have minus 6a minus b plus c, and then on the right side, the coefficient of the x term is 7. And then for the constant terms, on the left side of the equation, I have 10a minus c, and on the right side of the equation, I have minus 12. All right, so here I have a system of three equations in three unknowns. So I want to solve this system. You might know how to use your calculator to solve systems, or you can solve them by hand. This one's not too hard to solve by hand, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it that way. Uh, I might notice that if I add these last two equations together, the c terms will drop out. So if I add those last two equations together, I'll get 4a minus b, my c terms will drop out, and then I'll have negative 5 from the 7 plus negative 12. And then if I take that result and work with that result that I have here along with the original equation that I haven't really worked with yet, the a plus b equals 0, uh, we've got some nice elimination here adding those two equations together. So if I add those two equations together, I get um, 5a, the b terms drop out, equals negative 5. I can solve that for a, so I get a is negative 1. And then once I know my a, I can plug that into my other equations up at the beginning and figure out my b's and c's. So uh, I have a plus b equals 0, so negative 1 plus b equals 0 tells us b is 1. And then 10a, so 10 times negative 1 minus c equals negative 12. If I add 10 to both sides, I get negative c equals negative 2, or c equals 2. Okay, so there I've done my partial fractions work. I've got my a, b, c, and I can now rewrite my original um, integral in terms of these uh, simpler expression. So the integral of had my a, which was negative 1 over x minus 1, and then my bx plus c, so that's 1x plus 2 over that denominator, x squared minus 6x plus 10, and then I need to integrate that whole thing with respect to x. Okay, so at this point in an integration problem, you want to look at the integrals you have and think about, do I know these or do I know how to integrate these? Um, so you probably separate that into two separate integrals, at least in your head. This first one is not too bad. You can do a u substitution, u equals x minus 1, your du would be dx, and away you go with that. The second one is a little bit harder. Uh, you might think about u equals the denominator but then your du would be 2x minus 6, and I don't have the right uh, expression on the numerator to make that work. So this one, uh, this next one is a little bit of algebra. This is kind of a tricky algebra thing. Again, something that's probably been a long time since you've done this kind of algebra. But I'm going to separate the integral into two separate integrals so I can work on the one that I know how to do, negative 1 over x minus 1 dx, I'll use a u substitution on that, plus, and then this other one that I'm going to do a little bit of uh, nice algebra, fun algebra to do here. Okay, so this is an algebra thing that you may not have used for a while, and you probably didn't use it like this when you did it before. Uh, but what I'm going to do here on the denominator of this last one is I'm going to complete the square. Why I'm going to do that is because it works. Um, so how do I know that works? Well, I've just done a lot of integration problems, honestly. So, Okay, so to complete the square, I'm going to kind of pull apart that denominator 
into x squared minus 6x, and then I'm going to just leave a little bit of a space here and put the plus 10. And when you complete the square, you're going to look at the coefficient of the x term, the linear term, take half of that, so half of negative 6 gives you negative 3, and then you're going to square that. Negative 3 squared is 9, and that 9 is what you're going to add to complete the square. If you have an equation, you might add 9 to the other side of the equation to balance things, but I don't really have an equation here, so uh, I can't just go around adding 9 wherever I want. Uh, unless I balance that. So instead of adding 9 to both sides of an equation, I'm going to add 9 and subtract 9 so that I haven't changed the original denominator. The point of doing that, though, is that then the, the first part of what you have when you completed the square, the x squared term, the x term, and the constant term that you put in there should factor into the same factor twice x minus 3, the quantity squared, and then whatever you're left with at the end here uh, just will be whatever it turns out to be that's left over. So the goal in the completing the square is to force this same factor twice, x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the uh, integral that we're working on here. Uh, I don't want to forget this one that I need to do at some point. And then this last part here where I completed the square on the denominator. Okay, so uh, completing the square on the denominator sometimes helps uh, in that you might be able to see that uh, you have a function inside another function here. You might be able to make that work uh, for you substitution. Um, I would maybe like to think about letting u equal x minus 3, and then I get du equals dx. The actual problem here, though, is that I have this extra x on the numerator. So I completed the square to force the denominator how I wanted it to be, and now I'm going to do a little bit of forcing on the numerator to force it how I would like it to be. So I'm going to take that x plus 2 that is on the numerator there, and I'm going to think about pulling that apart a little bit into x, and then I'm going to leave a little space, and a plus 2. And what I want to force that numerator to be is actually x minus 3. So I have x plus 2, I want it to be x minus 3, so I'm going to put in a minus 3, but I can't just go around putting in minus 3's unless I balance that. So I put in a minus 3 to force an x minus 3, and then I have this little leftover bit here at the end. It may not be obvious yet why this is helping, but a couple more steps, and hopefully you'll be able to see what is going to happen here. All right, so on the numerator, I can think of the numerator that was x plus 2 as x minus 3, that quantity, and then plus a 5, a separate quantity. And my denominator, x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1, dx. All right, and then I'm going to do one more step of algebra here before we're ready to do some integration. Okay, so the point of splitting up that numerator actually was to split this into separate fractions. You can split up a numerator if you have uh, two fractions that are added that have the same denominator, you combine the numerator, so you can break that up. All right, so I basically just took something where I have the same denominator and two separate numerators, and I would add them. Normally, we'd be kind of going back the other direction with that, but here we uh, we went back, so we pulled that apart. And the point of doing that is that now all of these integrals that are here, I can do. They're all different u substitutions, so I'm going to write those out uh, for this time, but you're welcome to do those in your head if you want. This first integral, I'm going to let u equal x minus 1, and so du is dx, and then this first integral will just be negative 1 over u du, easy to integrate. The second integral here, I'm going to actually let u equal the entire denominator, 
u equals x minus 3, the quantity squared plus 1, and then your du, you've got to use chain rule here, would be 2 times the quantity x minus 3 to the first times the derivative of what's inside would be a 1 dx. And uh, I have an x minus 3 dx on the numerator. I just need to get rid of the 2. So I can divide through by 2. I should probably use a different letter here. How about w for that substitution? So 1 half dw is x minus 3 dx, which I have there. And then for this last one, I'm going to do a different substitution. So I'll use a different letter here, maybe v. This is not integration by parts, but I'm going to use a v. I'm just going to let v equal x minus 3. And so then my dv is dx. And so that integral, uh, the 5 can come out front here. That integral will end up being 1 over v squared plus 1 dv, which is one you know. That's a tangent inverse form. Okay, I didn't write down the middle integral. I probably should have done that as I was doing this, but uh, okay, in place of the x minus 3 dx, I'm going to put 1 half dw, and then in place of the entire denominator, I'll have w. All right, so now those are all integrals I know how to do. So now those are all integrals I know how to do, so now I just need to do them. So negative ln of absolute value of u plus one half natural log of absolute value of w plus five tangent inverse of v plus c. And now I need a back substitute for my u, v, and w. Negative natural log of x minus one plus one half natural log of that whole w thing, x minus 3, the quantity squared, plus 1, plus 5 times tangent inverse of w, or w was x minus 3, and a big old plus c at the end. Uh, if you want, and our textbook probably would do this, uh, you could multiply this all back out and rewrite that as x squared minus 6x plus 10 inside that ln but that's probably the only thing I would do to simplify it, and I don't even know if I would do that. I might just leave it uh, with everything that I have here at the end. All right, so that's pretty fun integration problem. We use a ton of algebra, some creative algebra there. The main thing is just make sure you're not violating rules of algebra. If you add something, you need to subtract something to balance that. You can multiply numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same thing to keep that one. So lots of fun using all the algebra that you learned a long time ago. All right.